Hello everybody, my name is Sophie and welcome to my new video. Today we are discussing the book talk famous polyamorous hockey romance Pucking Around by Emily Rath. You! I can't wait to discuss this with you guys. This book was so fun to read. I had the time of my life reading this. I can't lie, I hated it. <laughs> I posted my reading vlog already where you can see me reading the book because it is a reading vlog. <laughs> my live reactions to the book and I give you my life opinions as I'm reading the book, as it's happening. So that's my last video if you are interested in that. Watch this one first. <laughs> Watch that one later. This book is of course the notorious book that started the whole book talk hockey drama. It was the one that Kiara Lewis, the person that was mainly involved in this drama, first read and then she fell in love with sports romance, hockey romance specifically, and everything just kind of spiraled from there and unfolded to this point now where we're um, in the situation where everything, <laughs> everything's kind of weird. I've already made two podcast episodes about this, the Book Hater Club podcast, in case you're new here, and where I... The first one is where I explain the drama and the second one is an update on the situation because there was a little bit of an update and there's even more of an update. But that's for the next podcast episode that I'm going to do after this video. So now you know all of the plans. But of course we're here to discuss the book, which I'm not going to do. First, we have to look at the author <laughs> because I went into a deep dive yesterday. I'm going to give a disclaimer right away. This review and this video is not meant as hate on the author personally or people who like this book. I didn't like it, that doesn't mean you're not gonna like it, or I mean there are a lot of people who like it, you know what I mean? And so that's perfectly fine. If this is the kind of content that you enjoy, that's fine. There's some things that I like that you don't like, and I don't specifically seek out the author to send her hate or anything, you know? This is just for this space, and also I'm not hating on her. And she has specifically said that she does not mind negative reviews, because reviews are reviews, and that's a very mature way to go about this. But that being said, we are going to discuss the author first and how she handled this whole situation because I always look at the authors and I like knowing what's up with them. So I'm going to tell you because I found out a lot yesterday night. <laughs> this video turned out way longer than I anticipated. So I just want to inform everyone that there will be timestamps in the description box because I talk excessively about the author for some reason. I didn't think it was going to be this long, but I couldn't stop myself. So if you don't care about her and you don't want to hear it, you just want to hear the rant, you can look in the description and skip ahead. Don't worry about that. You know, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> also, I have another announcement to make. To all of my subscribers, there is a new feature on my channel called channel subscriptions. Memberships. Whatever you want to call it, actually. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> this is a new feature that allows you, as a viewer of mine, to give me money <laughs> it's a monthly subscription there's two different tiers and you obviously get benefits if you do decide to do this i just want to clarify right from here you do not have to do this this is just this is your decision like if you want to do it i'm super grateful but i don't want to make anyone feel like they have to do this or i will be uh, like i will be mad if they don't do it or anything don't feel guilty if you can't afford it or you just don't want to do it i totally get it there are two different tiers that are available right now. The first one is just the normal tier for two euros and 99 cents a month and it's called Book Hater, fitting for my Book Hater Club podcast. If you do decide to become a book hater, you get several benefits, of course. I'm gonna give back to you for paying me. You get early access to all of my videos. That will be 24 hours before the video goes live on my channel. You'll already be able to watch them. I'll also be giving shout outs to all of my book haters, of course, because I love you so much. And all of the polls that I've been doing on Instagram, which is at honestly Sophie YT, or on just my YouTube community tab regarding my next read will now exclusively be in the membership. I don't know how you call it, like program. But the members get to decide 
whatever is going to be my next read. I will give you a poll and the one with the most votes will be my next read. And so you have direct influence on my content. Also, I'll be asking questions regarding long form content. For example, I'm currently doing the second part for the Throne of Glass video and I do want to make content like that in the future too about different books or just like more long form content regarding one book or series. And that's also something that will be discussed in the membership program. I don't know what it's called, bitch. I don't speak English. I'm German. The second tier is one euro more expensive. It's three euros 99 cents a month. It's the honorable book hater tier. <laughs> this tier, you will get all the same benefits, obviously, as the normal tier. And it's basically just one euro more in case you decide you want to support me a little more. That's all. <laughs> I wanted to give this option just in case anyone wants to do it. Obviously, I'm actually not expecting anyone to do it, if I'm being honest. I'm just kind of giving you the option. But if I were to add benefits in the future, like exclusive content just for members or discount code on merch that I do want to do in the future, that will be added to the Honorable Bookator tier, which is the second tier, the more expensive one, obviously, because those people are paying more and so they would get additional benefits. But that's not supposed to be like a deciding factor because I don't know what when that's gonna happen or if that's gonna happen. So I'm just saying. The reason I'm doing this is just so if you want, you can support me a little bit more. A lot of YouTubers do this on Patreon. This is basically YouTube's form of Patreon. And the reason people do it on Patreon is because they only have to give 12% of their earnings from the membership. I think it's 12% to Patreon. And on YouTube, you have to give YouTube 30%. <laughs> I don't know anything about Patreon. I've never used that site. And so since I'm already on YouTube and all of my content is here, I just thought it would make more sense to keep it all on one platform and not to kind of, you know, split it all over the place. And so this is basically my form of Patreon now. And I think, you, listen, I failed math twice. Actually, if you want to look at it closely three times, Peace and love. <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, that means for the first tier, I get around two euros payout. And for the second tier, I would get two euros and 70 cents payout, just in case you're curious. The money that I do make through or will maybe potentially make through these memberships will all go towards the channel, of course. It's for the books that I read, to buy the books that I read, and also to upgrade the whole setup. I just recently invested into this camera and I love it. I love this camera so much, but the next thing that I do want to upgrade is the lighting situation because I think it's ass and lighting is really expensive for some reason. I didn't know. I looked it up. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's got to wait. But the money that I would potentially make from these memberships would go back towards the channel. It's not something where I'm like, oh, I want to buy myself a coffee. I don't really like coffee that much, you know? I just want to buy a new lighting. <laughs> and then it would also potentially go towards merch that I would make in the future which I really do want to make, but I just don't know where to start. But that's like, you know, if we think a little bit bigger. So again, if you go to the front page of my channel, it should say right where you can click subscribe, which I hope you are subscribed. Uh, you can click become a member or something like that. My YouTube is in German. I don't know what it says for you. And you can look at the benefits listed there again. It's explained there also. And if you do decide to become a member, Thank you very much. If you don't want to do it, that's also completely fine. I just want to tell you that that option is available now. And starting with the next video, you would already get those benefits, meaning early access and shout outs, of course. Thank you for listening. Now, again, remember timestamps in the description. I'm going to talk about Emerly Wrath now. I already did, you know, I'm in the future. Oh my God. And after that, the run starts and I'm going to have to keep filming that now. So... Let's go. It was kind of scary to me, honestly, because she has so much information about herself online to a point where I was able to find out. It's kind of scary to me how easy it was to find all this information out about her because I didn't have to look far. She gives away so much information about herself on her website and on her TikTok page, on her Instagram, everywhere. She posts her personal information everywhere, but she... Redacts the important information, but since she gives out so much found out where she works found out her husband's name So obviously I'm not going to share that with you guys because that is private information and maybe it's not accurate anymore Maybe it's old because but she has a big online presence and I think uh, She should be a little bit more careful because if my little German ass can find that out So Emily Rath is the name of the author She is 34 years old born in 1989 
in June or July, because she's a cancer. She's a double cancer. Guess who else is her main character in the book? The whole reason this deep dive started on her, like my deep dive on her, was because I was trying to figure out her age. I just wanted to know how old she was, because I hate when I can't find that information. And then I found out all of this additional information, but I did find out that she is 34 years old. Um, and that is important when you read a book, because when a book reads weird, you kind of want to know, like, how old is the person writing this and what beliefs could they have. That being said, she does seem like a very sweet person. Also, the, she's a professor at a redacted university and she has proudly announced this before and I dare say she's a doctor in philosophy. She did get her doctorate in 2019, which is very impressive. She did get it in philosophy and we can tell that it was not literature. Is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> so she does have her TikTok name as Dr. Emily Rath, which rightfully she's proud of it. And I would be too. It doesn't say it on her books. I would put it on my books. If I'm an author and I wear a doctor, I would write, put the doctor in it. But maybe she feels kind of uncomfortable with that because she does just write porn. She just writes smut. Spoiler. She does seem to be a sweet person, as I said. She has the right intentions, as far as I can tell from her online presence. And also, she is very educated in her field. She, uh, I think she has a master's in political science, which whatever the fuck that is. It's one of those terms where you're like, political science, ah, okay. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. And people on Rate My Professor have rated her continuously positive, saying that she's super educated, that her courses are fun, that they learn a lot, and that her quit that she makes <laughs> she mostly does quizzes and they're really easy. <laughs> I found all of that out last night, you know. Rate my professor. Mm hmm When this whole situation happened with uh the drama, it's interesting how she handled it. And I think her first response was quite a funny one. Peace and love, of course, because people were starting to talk about it and then they were starting to point out it started because Kiara Lewis read Pucking Around and obviously she is the author of Pucking Around. So she felt the need to come out making 50 million statements that have since been deleted. She only has two up now. Um, but the initial response to that video is very funny and I do have it screen recorded because it's still up on her page the original response. I'm gonna put the video up, but I'm just gonna watch it now. I just think that the way she reacts to it is the, I don't know how you say it, like the connotation is really funny. She started after Kira read Pucking Around by Emily Rath earlier. Th I am Emily Rath. I am Emily Rath. I am the author of Pucking Around. This is so dramatic. <laughs> like she's like, I am Bond. James Bond. That was her initial response. A lot more followed to a point where I never felt the need to find out where this whole situation started from until she started making this many statements about it. And it's curious to me because she is a grown woman. She's in her mid 30s. She has a son. She has a husband. She's a doctor. And I, the only way I can explain it to myself is she just felt really, really guilty. Because she felt like her book was the reason, initially she felt this way, her book was the reason that all of this spiraled and people were feeling uncomfortable when that is like, it's not on you girl, you know? She was, she just wrote a book and someone read it and it, it wasn't on you. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. I thought that that video was really funny because she's very dramatic about it and so I went back and looked at a lot of her TikToks last night. I spent a lot of time on her page trying to get the vibe. She does have a 10 minute final kind of statement up on her page. That's the only video I didn't watch. <laughs> Cause I did see, the only reason I knew about her being this included for a little bit longer is because one time, this is really funny. I opened TikTok and the first video I saw was a video of her crying. And you can see, I took a screenshot and that screenshot was unintentional. I was trying to like, I was lying in my bed. It's almost 1 a.m. in the screenshot. I was laying in my bed. I was like flipping over to the other side and I held my phone like this. And then I took a screenshot accidentally because I was holding it that way. And so now I have proof of this video existing of her bawling on the For You page. And this video itself, I don't know how long it is. It is, it was long. It was like five minutes at least long of her just crying. And 
I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know who this woman was. This was the first time I saw her. <laughs> I knew about the drama, but I didn't know about her. She was crying her eyes out. And I was like, what is going on? And so I watched it and she just didn't say what it was about. And I was like, okay, I don't, what is going on, girl? She was just saying, oh my God, I'm, I feel so sorry and I feel so bad. Thank you to everyone who supported me through this, blah, blah, blah. And again, she just went way too into it. Like, girl, ugh, too many statements, too much guilt that she felt going online and crying and then she she's deleted this video but thank god to me accidentally taking a screenshot because now i have proof that this actually did happen so i went back and i watched her statements that was still up not the 10 minute one because i don't have 10 minutes to watch this woman make a fucking statement about something that didn't need a 10 minute statement peace and love and i watched the other one because there are two basically up one statement and one is called a message of solidarity and hope for hockey romance readers in that video interestingly enough she says because true hockey romance readers have been here before and the whole context of this is that she's saying true hockey romance readers have been here before all of this drama happened the true hockey romance readers you are not a real fan of hockey romance if you are in any way involved in this drama and i found that was a very bold statement because that just feels very i don't know the english word never mind <laughs> this is like only true fans it's like it's reminding me of my fan days with one direction where it's like only true fans know about the carrot lore, which I don't even remember what the fuck that was. You know, it's just like the OGs. And I feel like that's so discouraging for people who came in afterwards and maybe played into it a little. Even younger people who maybe read this and played into it and didn't know that there was anything wrong with it. I thought that was a really bold statement. And then she goes on to say, we were here before all of this started in April and we were ringing the alarm bells back in April when it started escalating. And I also found this a very curious statement. So I went back on her TikTok to April. <laughs> I was in such a rabbit hole because I really wanted to get to the bottom of this. And on the 12th of April, she makes her first video because uh, Kiara Lewis posted a video about pucking around on the 12th or on the 11th doesn't fucking matter and she says I was in my lecture and my phone was going buzz 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 and I come to find out Kiara Lewis posted a video about pucking around and this is on the 12th and she says thank you to everyone with like a glass of wine you know she's just She's just indulging a little bit. She's so happy that so many people are finding her book, rightfully so, you know, because she got a lot of attention through this. And she's saying, thank you all so much. Love you. This is when it started. And so I was watching this video thinking she would ring the alarm bells, but she didn't. So I keep kept watching. I only watched April. I didn't continue watching May, June, July. Bitch, I don't have the time. She's saying April, so I'm looking at April. Peace and love. The only video that I could find, and I'm so sorry, this is a very unfortunate screenshot. I don't really know why it looks like this. I thought this was gonna be the one. It was on the 29th of April, and it was very solemn, a message from Emily Rath Books. I thought this was where she was gonna say, take, like, chill out, take it down a notch, stop being so freaky about hockey players. She just says, don't worry guys, if people review my book negatively, I don't mind. That's all she said in that video. You can go back and watch it. That's why I also have the right to sit here and review it. Because <laughs> it was bad, peace and love. Regard like, regardless of all this drama, it was just really ass. She played into the harassment of people, peace and love, you know? I have to keep saying peace and love. Because there was a time before all of this drama where she started duetting people's videos and this didn't have to be hockey related it could just be like two guys in a pool is what i saw where she would duet them and say oh my god this is so my character's coded and she in her apology she said i'm gonna stop doing this because i understand now that it's wrong and that i played into harassment and that it was not okay of me and that people could feel uncomfortable through this and I don't want people to feel uncomfortable. Which is funny to me, or not funny, that's not the right word, but it's interesting to me because you are again a grown woman duetting these men where you're not sure most of the time, I bet, how old they are. And could be in their early 20s, her characters are like in their mid to late 20s or early 30s. Editing them and saying, oh my god, this is so 
Jake coded, blah, 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 sending people their way, thirsting over them. And arguably those videos that she used to do got the most views. So I know why she did them. They got the most views on her page. She was like, this is, that was the marketing for uh, pucking around. I realize now that it's wrong. I think you could have realized that sooner. Like, I think that should have never, obviously duetting hockey, uh, fucking TikToks where people play hockey. I think that's completely fine because that's actually related to your book, but just random people in a pool, for example, or sitting on a couch and saying, this is so my characters and people like tagging her and being like, oh my God, you're so hot. You're like that one character, you know, whatever. I don't think that's okay. And also, I just don't get it. I just don't get the thirsting. Sorry, I'm not that thirsty. <laughs> Maybe I am. I'm gonna get some water. So regardless of this, all of this, okay, she has a Facebook group. And I think that tells you enough. <laughs> she has a Facebook group and I was thinking about joining it, but I couldn't be bothered. It has 6,000 members, which is a lot, I think. And it's an exclusive group where they do discussions and they can do polls for names of book characters and stuff like that. I don't know who uses Facebook anymore. Peace and love. Like, Facebook is such a millennial thing. I'm sorry that I keep mentioning them. Love all of my millennials, okay? I see you. I hear you. Love you. But this is just hardcore millennial core. <laughs> she has a uh, page on her um, website where she talks about personal facts. They're all really... Like, not all, but a lot of them are really random. She used to be a horse girl and she still is, I think. Also tells you a lot. Peace and love to all the horses. I do love horses, you know. She, uh, again, uh, has a master's in political science. She's a doctor of philosophy. She lived in North America, Asia, and Africa, along with... P bitch, I was gonna say, along with Florida. <laughs> like, that's an old continent. That's funny, because I could tell that she's never... I don't know if she's ever been to Europe, but I could tell she never lived here. <laughs> Because she was making very stereotypical comments about Europeans and I was like, okay, have you ever met one? And then funnily enough, I keep saying funnily, I don't even know if that's a word, but I went on her Instagram and one of her pinned posts is frequently asked questions and it's how do you pronounce your last name? And I don't know how anyone wouldn't know how to pronounce Wrath. That just seems like a really like <laughs> easy name to pronounce to me. But she posted this on her Instagram and she goes, it's pronounced just like the word Wrath. It's German. Summon me! <laughs> I'm German! <laughs> if you want to be particular about it, I don't know anyone named Rath, and I'm German and I live in Germany. I've never lived anywhere else. It is German and Belgian of origin, and if you would want to be particular, if you... I don't know why she had to mention it's German, because this now just makes me go on this tangent. It is not pronounced Rath in German. Why the fuck would it be? It's pronounced Rad. This means without the H at the end, it means to advise. And if you would change the T to a D, it would mean wheel. Pronounced the same way, Rad. Some other things about her, you know, she's a scuba certified person. She has a scar on her foot from a traumatic leech incident, which is of course really important information to know about her. She just makes herself very available on the internet. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Also, my next podcast episode will also talk about this because I think it's a really interesting topic. But after her book became so popular, which Pucking Around was published on March 20th, and in April is when it started being picked up by Kiara and then getting popular, they decided to change the covers. It originally was three men and a woman, and it was very much the vibe of the book, I would say. Very, <laughs> very like, how do you say? Sultry? I don't know what that means. <laughs> and they then changed it to the cover that it is now that is more marketable and less like slutty. Which, peace and love, like we don't slut shame, but I don't know a word. How do you say? Like less, I don't know a word. But it's also interesting that this is a marketing picture that she did coming March 20th and the way she advertises this place is workplace romance, laugh out loud, it will fit. <laughs> I think the first cover was way better for the series. Obviously it's not- why am I sitting like this weirdly? It was not as marketable because maybe people are turned off by covers like this. They just remind me of like airport covers, you know, when you're at the airport or you're at the train station. And they have these random ass books and they all have like people on the cover. 
I don't even know how that works. Like, is that just cheaper? Sorry, I don't know. But they changed it and all of the covers were changed. Yesterday night, she did a live stream on her Instagram, which I randomly saw because I was looking up information on her. And she was live with someone else that I don't know. I don't know if she was live on TikTok too or on Facebook, where she obviously has a bigger community than on Instagram. But I joined that live to see what was going on. She had 46 views. I don't know how long they had been live. And I joined and someone says in the comments or in the chat, can we get more pegging, please? <laughs> and then I closed it. So that is all I have to say, I think, for now about the author and the history of this book. Sorry that was so long, but I just, it just kept, more things just kept coming where I was like, this is also weird. <laughs> this is also weird. So let's talk about the book finally. Let's review the book, right? Of course, before I get into the substance of the book, I do have to talk about all of the information that we get before the book even starts. Because I have never encountered this. And that being said, this was my first, how do you say, erotica? <laughs> I read it on my Kindle, my trusty Kindle. <laughs> At the beginning of the book, you get an author's note by Emily where she explains that this story starts with a spicy prequel novella called That One Night. While you can definitely read this book without reading the prequel, you'll be missing a bit of character development between uh, Rachel and Jake, which is not true. <laughs> Rachel and Jake are the main two, uh, the main couple, I would say. They are from the prequel novella. And what they did in that was they had a one night stand and that's it. They didn't exchange any names. And that's the basis of the plot for the two of them. Because in case you don't know, this book is a... And I, I literally looked up the word for a four-way relationship, but I forgot. Quad? I think it was a quad. So they're not a thruple. They're a quad. There are four people in this relationship. And I have said in my reading vlog, I think that's one too many. Are we in the fucking Riverdale finale? What is going on? There is no character development between the two of them as far as I'm concerned because no novella about a one-night stand could warrant the interactions between the two of them. They don't justify the way they interact right away when they meet. Being like, I love you so much, you're the one, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Like, that much can't have happened in a fucking prequel novella, Peace and Love. That's of course not everything! that we get before the book even starts. I was literally starting to read this. I was like, okay, author's not whatever, let's start. And we get tropes, tags, and content warnings. Super interesting because this is the part where I'm saying I've never encountered this in a, in a different book that I read, like a published book that I reviewed here. This has never been the case. Of course, we have content warnings in some of them that are a little bit darker, which I think is a good thing. Trigger warnings, I think, should be in every book if they deal with darker topics or just in general you know it doesn't hurt anyone to include them it hurts people to not include them i mean that <laughs> I, was, I, was, I mean that so we start off with tropes it says hockey romance why choose friends to lovers insta love insta love why are we still reading insta love does anyone genuinely enjoy insta love is my question tags now this is where we uh, get into it too much sex everyone has tattoos Baby girl, bend over, daddy. Finish 101. Peace and love, Emily. Have you ever been to Finland? I can tell you haven't. We get the content warnings, which again is good. Love that. We have uh, degradation, snowballing, spit play. And then it doesn't stop there, guys. It doesn't stop. You're like, okay, we have everything. No, we get the star signs. Those fucking the zodiac signs of the main characters. Rachel, of course, is a cancer double cancer just like our author she has uh, revealed this and she is i don't know what her rising sign is i think libra libra or virgo one of the two then the one of the dudes is an aries jake is a taurus and caleb is a sagittarius which do we care about this at all no they do talk about zodiac signs in the book a lot and for some reason everyone just knows things about zodiac signs which i don't think is for a lot of guys is like the case peace and love but everyone just does maybe this is just like a perfect it is a perfect universe in this world we get the entire lineup of the team and for me who i don't know anything about hockey i didn't learn anything about hockey in this book 
You know, the, if I've said in my reading vlog, if this book made you fall in love with hockey, just like it did with Kiara, then it's truly a thing where I'm like, is it because you care about hockey or because you want to sexualize players? Either or. We don't even meet most of the people on this list. I don't know if she's planning on writing books about all of them. She has written a, a sequel that just came out about Rachel, the main character's best friend, and one of the players. It's a reverse age gap, which... Reverse age gap means just that the woman is older, which I didn't know. I thought age gap is just age gap. What do you mean reverse age gap? It's just an age gap. And they have a 10 year difference. I think the dude is 23 and the woman is 33. I don't like that that much. I could never imagine dating a 32 year old if I dated someone that was 10 years older than me. What the fuck am I going to do with them? Peace and love. We also meet the coaches. I'm not sure if we ever meet them. We have team support. We meet them. We have the medical support. They are kind of relevant because our main character is a nurse. <laughs> She's a nurse. That's not true. Our main character is a doctor. She is supposed to be a medical student. She is a doctor, just like Emily, but Emily isn't a real doctor. She's just a doctor in philosophy which is a real doctor okay but whenever i hear someone say i'm a doctor i don't think oh you're a doctor in philosophy i think oh you study medicine cool <sighs> she is supposed to be 27 a doctor and now also being part of one of a new nhl hockey team the part of the team a berkeley fellowship i don't know what a fellowship is i don't care what a fellowship is it's like a internship is what I thought and she does end up being the team doctor so that's good to know <laughs> operations management do we fucking care social media manager do we fucking care no it doesn't fucking stop finish words and phrases bitch I actually wanted to test this theory and just put it into Google Translate and see if these phrases come out because I want to know how she did it because she's not Finnish and I mean maybe she has been to Finland to give her the benefit of the doubt but I don't think so. Let's try my favorite one. My favorite phrase that is in the beginning. Um, you are tight. Interesting. It's not the same. It's not the same. Why not? Where did she get this translation from? Oh, okay. They translate on Google Translate. They translate tight with strict. So where did she get it from? But again, she has this page in the beginning because we have to do this finish. Trying to get me to go back and forth whenever this dude says something finish. And it's like a bunch of phrases. It's like a bunch of phrases. It's like almost, you know, like I'm not going back and forth. <laughs> He's in love. And then finally, pucking around. Jacksonville race hockey. Hashtag one. Finally, we can start. Let's put up the hair because we're getting really into it. So we start off the book with Rachel at home with her best friend. She lives with her best friend called Tess and the sequel is about her. This book I mentioned is a quad relationship. I think that she shouldn't have done that because if you read the novella, which I didn't do, but if you read the novella and you were like, wow, this is so cool and so good, you could have never guessed that this was going to go into a polyamorous direction. And so a lot of people I saw online were saying, oh, I wish we could have just gotten Jake and Rachel together, so I don't really know. Like, just write more books about other characters. But she did not. She had to include three men in this. The second dude is Caleb, who is Jake's best friend. And then the third dude is Ilmari, which is the Finnish dude, who the other two dudes, they also have a thing together. But Ilmari is just kind of there because he just wants to be with Rachel. And so his story, I would have left out. <laughs> Leave it. This hair clip is so fucking ass. She wakes up after a night out with her bestie that she lives with and she is she is like severely hangover. And so she goes like this, there's only one solution, I'm just never drinking again, no more dancing, no more bars. Because at 27 you can only have fun if you go out and get severely drunk. If you go out to a bar and dance without alcohol, is it really any fun? It is. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean and I think it's kind of weird. Off to a bad start, you know? I just get so iffy when people are like, I can't have fun without drinking because you can't have fun without drinking and it's not that hard. Her best friend comes in and Rachel describes her like this in her mind. 
and this is on page two guys okay so i was already i knew this was going to be tough scratch tess thumbs in down the hall and stands in the doorway her wild red curls spilling around her shoulders she's a smoking hot size 20 with a perfect pear-shaped body because if she was a size 20 without a perfect pear-shaped body she would just be a fat fat fatty I'm kidding, of course, but you know, that's the vibe we're getting. As usual, she's wearing nothing but a crop top and her undies, a spray of peachy freckles dotting across her chest. The girl sheds clothes around this apartment like a husky sheds hair. Not that I mind. I'm the daughter of a super famous rock star, born in California and raised on a tall bus. I've seen some wild things in my time, and naked Tess doesn't bother me one bit. I hate this kind of exposition. It has nothing to do, I mean, it has something to do with this book, but realistically nothing to do with this book when the character explains in her head, you're, you're in her head and she goes, oh, I'm this and this, I'm this and this. I like it more when it flows naturally and we find out through dialogue or through character interactions. I don't like this kind of exposition, but of course she's the daughter of a famous rock star and she's rich because... <laughs> Why, but like, she's supposed to be a brokey? She's supposed to be in student debt? Never. Never. Her best friend is waking her up because she's getting a call from her doctor. <laughs> hey girl, you have chlamydia. Her doctor is her boss. That's what I mean. <laughs> Tess is waking her up. I roll my eyes knowing she means well. Tess is just being overprotective because she's never liked doc Dr. Hala. She doesn't like the way he micromanages me or his cold aloof manner. I guess it's just never bothered me. He can't help that he's European. Fuck you. <laughs> America is so much better than Europe, honestly. Like, in America, no one is, like, cold or aloof. You know? Fuck Europe. This just proves to me she's never been to Europe. Peace and love. Maybe she has been. You know, I don't want to say that. I don't want to be like, I don't want to say ultimate statements. This just makes me think that she's never been to Europe. Or never met any Europeans. Do I seem cold and aloof to you? But I'm also not Finnish. This dude is Finnish. Spoiler! So she is a hip and knee injury specialist, which is really good because she has worked for different sports teams already. So she has a lot of credits to her name. She applied for a fellowship, a Berkeley fellowship, and she was denied this fellowship. And so she's been kind of, you know, a little bit sad. Understandably so. I'm working out or hiding out until- we never see her working out one time in this book. I'm working out or hiding out until Tess gets fed up and drags me out. My therapist might be ready to pres prescribe Prozac, but Tess has a whole other kind of therapy in mind. Dick therapy. Hmm. Since I got back from Seattle, she's been on a mission to get me laid. She thinks a wild night with a guy will cure me of my funk, but just the thought of touching another guy has me cringing. She's also a little bit aloof <laughs> because she misses her secret Seattle boy, which is Jake. Uh, she fucked Jake in Seattle when she was at her brother's wedding and that's where they met. They fucked and didn't exchange names and she flew back home not knowing who he is and she just misses him a lot. His cock. Because realistically, what else does she miss? Does she know anything else about him? She doesn't even know his fucking name. Eventually, of course, she gets the fellowship because the other dude broke his legs or hands or both. <laughs> she gets sent to a new NHL. Why can't I say NHL? What the fuck? <laughs> NHL team, which is a hockey team. It's a new one called the Jacksonville Rays. And Jacksonville is in Northern Florida. And she gets sent there. She's super excited. She loves hockey, of course, because everyone in America loves hockey, which I wasn't aware of that it was such a big thing. I don't know anything about hockey. I don't care. Oh, I'm so bored. She uh, gets a call from her doctor. He says the dude broke his legs and arms or whatever. You get the fellowship. You have to pack as soon as possible. The next day she flies to Florida to join the team immediately because she's already late because this should have started earlier, but since she got it delayed, Obviously, she's a little late. Okay, girl. There's a dude picking her up from the airport. His name is Caleb. He's the equipment manager and he is one of the thruple guys. Well, you know, one of the quad guys. He is tattooed. He's a surfer boy. He's super hot. He has a dog. And she's super clumsy, meaning Rachel is super clumsy. Which, of course, is fine. But 
she's ridiculously clumsy, you know, to a point where you're like, how the fuck did you manage to get your doctors? <laughs> Whatever. She wants to get into the car. She's hurrying to get into the car because she had to let him wait because her bags got lost and she was trying to get her bags back. And so the guy was waiting outside for a while. She rushes outside to him. She's like, let's just get into the car. And her fucking back breaks. And all of her stuff spills onto the floor. This is the first chapter two, the end of chapter two. The first connotation where you kind of get the vibe of this book. It says, Surfer Boy is holding a dildo. My dildo. It was a gag gift from Tess. And it's most certainly a gag that she packed it for me. It has to be because the dildo is large and purple and shaped like an octopus tentacle. And that's how the chapter ends. We get multiple POVs in this book. All of the main characters have their own POVs. And so the next... POV after this dildo incident, of course, is the dude. He goes, fuck, she's got a septum piercing. I'm a sucker for a pierced and tatted girl. Oh, for a... Uh, I thought I was going to say girls, but it says a uh, pierced and tatted girl. Does she have tats too? I can't tell. What I can tell is that the guys are going to go crazy. She'll be breaking hearts by day's end tomorrow. She is pierced the fuck up. That fucking septum piercing is telling you that she is crazy. She is, of course, not like other girls, which we will get to find out very soon. And her septum piercing is just changing the world. Of course, she takes it out to be professional at work. But when work's off, she's putting that bitch back in. I don't know why septum piercings are unprofessional. I never got why piercings are unprofessional or tattoos, but whatever. That's just me. She goes to her new apartment, which coincidentally is right next to Caleb's apartment. And this is provided to her by the team of course super nice perks she also gets a car and shit like that i wonder how much she gets paid but she is the daughter of a super famous rock star so it doesn't matter she goes outside onto the balcony and for some reason the door locks itself and she can't get back inside so thankfully she is next door neighbors with the hot dude caleb and he comes outside he's like haha i should have told you and it's like why the fuck does the balcony door just lock that's such a dumbass feature. If I can see him standing there in nothing but his shorts, he can see me in my thong and crop guns and roses tea. I cross my arms over my braless tits. I'm really tired. It's just a lot of really vulgar language, which is fine because this is an adult novel. Erotica, obviously they have like disrespectful... <laughs> disrespectful? In German you would say Gottlos, <laughs> which means without God. But I would say God laws and sex. Like God would be embarrassed. Yeah, whatever. She sleeps over in his apartment. They are immediately attracted to one another and the for no particular reason they just he just likes tatted girls. By the way guys, I don't know if you're still watching, you know, I've now been filming for a while already and we're only in the beginning of the book. But I did find out today that I passed all of my exams from the semester. I just found out this morning, I wanted to tell you. I'm really happy. We now get Jake introduced into this because she is, of course, part of the team now and nothing else. She's part of the team now. She meets Jake in the parking garage because Jake, the Seattle dude that she fucked in the prequel novella, coincidentally plays for this team. They meet each other. The interaction at first is kind of awkward and then they kind of argue where she's like, you didn't even recognize me. And... This is Jake's POV and he reads like a teenager boy. He reads very immature. He's supposed to be like the goofy, silly, clumsy counterpart to Rachel. But he just reads very young and he's like, I don't know how, I think he's also 27 or 28. She drags her fingers through her hair, pushing the loose strands back from her face. I want to slap her hand away for doing my job. I'm the one who brushes her hair back. I'm the one who takes care of her. That's my fucking job and I swear to God, no one is going to do it better than me. Not even her. She's mine. Chill out. It's not that deep. So peace and love, I'm just not entirely sure what I missed in the novella for all of this to go down this fast. I love how I just jump back right back into it. Like it's not the next fucking day. Doesn't matter, I'm still mad. You know, it does make a little bit more sense when you realize that one of the tags was insta love. So we now finally get to meet the goalie which his name is omari he is finnish and he's the third person in this uh quad and he was written very inconsistently and again i don't know if emily is finnish i don't think she is i think she would have mentioned it by all the shit that she already does mention if she knows anyone who's finnish 
she's probably discussed this before, but I just don't know because I didn't watch every single one of her fucking videos. But for some reason, this dude is watching Rachel because this is in his POV and he goes, we're like the kitten and the gorilla. I huh? I don't know if this is supposed to be like a Finnish folklore tale, like the gorilla. <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, I don't think it's a folklore tale. <laughs> the way he's written here, I think is a little bit stupid. She was kind of, especially there's one scene where he, uh, instead of rodeo, so it says like cow ride or something. And Rachel's like, oh my God, you're so stupid. You're European. That's not why it's meant. That's like not the word for it. And he's like, okay, girl. Fuck you. I don't know. It's He's written like that where he doesn't know the word for rodeo and then he goes on very inspiring, life-altering, changing, ever impressing speeches later on in the book where you're like, okay, but does he know English or does he not know English? Because at some points you think he's written in a way where it's like cute he's learning English and in other parts it's like, okay, this man has like graduated with a PhD. In the same POV of the Finnish dude, she is writing as a Finnish dude, as a European, and it's written like this. She smiles again. Americans always do that. Smile when they don't mean it. I suppose it's meant to put people at ease and it works on most other Americans. To me, it is. it always comes off as disingenuous. Don't smile unless you mean it. And I don't want her fake smiles. I want to earn them. <laughs> what the fuck kind of line is that? And that just explains to me that if I, I wonder, I actually, when this gets translated to German, which I don't think it is already, how will they, will they keep that anti-Europeanness in there? <laughs> like, why is he trying to be deprecating towards Americans? She's trying to be like, oh my god, yeah, I want, like, Europeans would always think that Americans do face, fake smiles and, like, Europeans are just always honest and they're, you know, they never fake smile, they never lie, they're just always honest. Let me tell you something. That's not true. <laughs> I don't know. The European lines just always get me. I have to defend my country. Uh, no, continent. <laughs> her best friend, Tess, the one uh, the sequel is about. I didn't really like her in this book. She says girl a lot. As in, in almost every fucking sentence, she says, okay, girl, let's go, girl. And this book, again, was published in 2022. And you have tells like Tess saying, yes, get it, girl. Make him sweat. Yes. I mean, didn't we leave that in like 2016? I don't know anyone that says yes anymore. I'm sorry. But that's just a telltale sign that you are not... Whatever. I don't want to be mean. <laughs> the reason she's saying make him sweat is because she told Jake, Rachel told Jake, I'm not going to get with you. I'm your doctor, which she's not his doctor. She's his physical therapist, somewhat doctor. We don't really know actually what her position is. He really wants to get with her and she says, you know what? No, we're not going to get together. You're going to have to wait until the contract is up like 10 months and then we can get together. As soon as she's gone, my confidence falters. Rachel Price does not send nude pictures of herself to men. I'm suddenly nervous. Snatching up my wine and my phone, I go inside. I really shouldn't do this. I don't want to lead him on. But you really want an orgasm? This is the first sex scene because she obviously doesn't hold herself accountable. Not hold herself accountable. She doesn't stay true to her intentions. <laughs> She's like, okay, I'm just gonna send him some nudes. He's out with his friends right now. He rushes to the bathroom and then they have phone sex. She really wants an orgasm? Just jerk off, queen. She ends up doing it, you know? But it's like, you could have done that without having him on the phone and breaking your own vir virtue. What are these words in my head? I don't even know what they mean. Oh yeah, the Caleb dude, the other, um, the best friend of Jake's, he is queer. He is not uh, kind of. He's not. He's not calling himself bi, which is fine. And I did find it kind of weird because Jake eventually also realizes that he, of course, is in love with Rachel, but he's also in love with Caleb, with his best friend. And he keeps being like, "Oh, but I'm not for that gay shit." <laughs> He's like, okay, I like Caleb, I like my best friend, I want to fuck him, but I don't want to fuck any other man. And it kind of comes across as a little bit weird 
just the way it was written because I do think it's great that we have this representation in there and that we have this gay awakening and everything, you know, all for that. It was kind of clumsy, I would say. Caleb was a hockey player himself and then he got an injury and now he has a bad knee, can't play anymore and is just the equipment manager for Jake's team. It took losing everything with my knee injury to face the truth I hid from everyone, including myself. I'm queer. What kind of line introduction? What kind of plot introduction is that? How does you having a knee injury make you realize you're gay? There is no plot to analyze for me here. He has this inner monologue explaining to us that he realized he was queer and that he was into Jake too, but he didn't want to tell him that he was into him. But he did eventually come out to Jake, and Jake was like, he has this. He explains this to us, and he's like, yeah. As soon as Caleb told me that he's gay or queer, he I cut all of that toxic bullshit. Which implies that before his best friend told him he was queer, he would make fun of gay people? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? As we further in the plot, we have a scene where that leads up to the first threesome. And f I didn't know that this was a thing because, again, I didn't know anything about hockey. But apparently, the hoes in hockey are called pug bunnies. Because we love degrading women. And of course, Rachel is not like the other girls, which means she's not like the other puck bunnies. And there's a scene that I talked about in my reading vlog also, where she's at the club with the men and she is dressed skimpy, but not super skimpy. Like she's still wearing an overall, but it's just, it's super hot, but she's still wearing clothes. And all of the other bitches, they're like barely wearing anything. Can you believe that? One of Caleb's ex-girlfriends comes up to uh, their booth or something. I don't know how American clubs work. I barely know how German clubs work. She tries to uh, get with Caleb or not really get with Caleb, but she tries to like say, oh my God, introduce me to one of your co-workers, just one of the players, because she did actually leave him after she he got his injury. And then obviously she was just a gold digger and a pug bunny, so she didn't want to be with him anymore. This is the scene where Rachel comes up to Caleb, sits on his lap. We have we need to have the scene, of course, because what where would we be without this scene? Oh my god, Caleb, I love you so much. You're my boyfriend, right? And who are you, girl? What blah, blah, blah. And they have like this back and forth where she completely destroys the other girl, and then the girl runs off, and all the other dudes are like, Yeah, we love Rachel, we love her, she's not like other girls, yeah. And it just Whenever shit like this is published or written in 2022, <laughs> what? <laughs> I want to say, whenever I read shit like this in books that were published in the, how do you say it, this decade, the 20s? Are we in the 20s? We're all roaring 20s. You get my point. Like, this is not 2010 anymore. We are not the Hunger Games. We are not Divergent. We are like other girls, you know what I mean? It's like, we're over this. And especially this blatant, like... I'm better than everyone and all the guys cheer me on because I'm not like other bitches. It's just too much for me. I can't read that shit anymore. I'm sorry. I'm so over it. And that being written by like a grown woman too with a son. I mean, it does make you wonder like why does she think this is necessary to include in her books to make her main character be so different from everyone and then put other women down? Quite frankly, the girlfriend was, the ex-girlfriend was being a bitch. Fuck her, you know, but we could have done that in a different way. Absolute insane broom closet sex scene. Ugh, I'm so excited. They have a threesome in the- not- it's like a broom closet in the club and she takes out- of course she's already fucked Jake um in- oh my god I just got so insecure in my head I was like wait does his name Jack? No it's Jake. <laughs> Why the fuck would his name be Jack? She fucked Jake in the novella already and so now we have a threesome with Caleb. She is feeling his hard cock holy shit caleb i stroke him from root to tip and he groans one hand going to my shoulder my hand is wrapped around his dick his pierced dick four times pierced i brush my thumb over four stiff metal ruts with barbells on at either end oh well, i'm gonna be honest with you i'm not the expert on cock piercings how are they pierced? Are they through? Ooh. <laughs> are they going through his penis? Is that not like impacting 
his ability to pee? I don't know, guys, but he does have a four times pierced cock. Not once, not twice, four times, because one time would be boring. Jake didn't know about this because even though they went to college together and in college would have foursomes, like the two of them with other women, he, he did this sometime after when he was depressed, maybe. He wanted to feel something, so he got his cock pierced. He does say the C word a lot, which... I think it's weird. Ugh, I think it's weird when people use that word because it's such a taboo word and then they use it in smut and it's like, you were just waiting for this one, huh? There are also very weird descriptions that makes me wonder. First of all, I wonder if she's ever uh, encountered a pierced penis. Makes me wonder. Second of all, the descriptions of the sex scenes, I just don't understand how people can read this. And of course, this is with peace and love, you know, to each their own. But how they can read this and be like, this is so hot. I'm wet. Not me, girl. Putting his knees and then he's lifting up and in at once impaling me on his cock. My pussy strangles Jake's cock. Caleb's tarred cum. Which I'm still wondering over that line. I pointed it out in my reading block. I, I still don't get that line. What does tarred cum? Is it the consistency of it or... Why are, why are we describing? Because this is the only time she does it. Maybe she does it once again. But it's like, it's not happening enough for it to be warranted. For it to be like a usual description. Of course, we get the I love you from Jake. He's the first one to say I love you to Rachel. I'm not eating Rachel, not sleeping. I can't concentrate on or off the eyes. Ask K, he knows. For what's wrong, I'm in love with you, Rachel. And you can say that's crazy, but I'm not some love-struck fool that falls for any girl at the first flick of her lashes. It seems like it, though. Seems an awful lot like it. They end up moving in together, her and Jake and Caleb. And no one says anything about this. Jake is kind of like, okay, you can't be with Caleb because... He's just working on the team, like he's just the equipment manager, but for us we have to tell HR. And as far as I'm concerned, they do tell HR, but then the HR doesn't say anything about them moving in together, like the three of them. And also no one else says anything, and we get like monologues about, oh my god, the press is so bad, and I finally made a name for myself, and I want to be taken seriously as a doctor after I was a party girl in my teens, and the press was on and on about me. Because my dad is a famous rock star. I just don't think she takes her job that seriously with all the things that she does. Like, it's not like they're trying an awful lot to hide it and make it a secret from the world, making out in public and shit like that. It's like, it's, they're not trying that hard. Another very telling quote is, of course, Holly bulking biceps, Batman. Now, I do love Robert Pattinson, but this, this is about the finish, dude. And at this point, she hasn't, as far as I'm concerned, like, gotten with him. They haven't done anything yet. And she is just his doctor. They haven't had any sexual interactions or any flirting particular being done. He's very, like, the Finnish dude is very secluded and just very... Whatever, I don't know the words. They... So late. And so imagine this being your doctor and him just, like, sexualizing you. The whole time in his head, if the roles were reversed, this would be so weird. I'm sorry, it's true. Like, it's the same if this book was like, Rachel was a dude, and then um, the Finnish dude was a woman, and she would think in, he would, the doctor would think in his head, wow, those big ass boobies. <laughs> that wouldn't be so nice. But also just the wording, holy bulking biceps, Batman. What does Batman have to do with this? How old are we? 34. Because sometimes she includes these descriptions like the Batman line and they never come up again even in similar tones and it just makes you wonder like why did she feel like you I don't think she had an editor for this book. Maybe she did. Maybe she did but how do you find an editor that's as unhinged as you? She decides to help the Finnish dude out because of course she is still a doctor that specializes in hip and knee injuries and she figures out that the Finnish dude is hiding an injury because he's getting scouted for the um, Finnish Olympic team. And he doesn't want anyone to know that he's injured because this could mean that he wouldn't be able to play in the Olympics or he would have to end his career or whatever. So she's like, okay, don't worry about it. I'll help you. And that's how they start bonding. I'm just going to read this line out without commentary. 
Mama needs a glass of wine after this marathon of a week. Oh, by the way, just to prove to you that she's not like other girls, here's one of her monologues. You don't? Let me spell it out for you then. I take a step closer. Your best friend found the love of his life. She's talking to Caleb. So now you're reeling. You don't know what to do because she's not some blonde puck bunny named Kelsey who wants to marry him and have his 2.5 babies that she'll dress in Gucci onesies doesn't end here. The corner of his mouth twitches. She's not. I tuck the towel off my head and drop it to the floor. My mess of a damp hair falls around my shoulders. Nope. She's a Thai food eating, which she never does in this book, scrubs wearing, curses like a sailor, hot mess of a doctor. A born and bred rock and roller who grew up dropping acid behind her, behind the amps at her daddy's sold out shows. I went up to the president of Disney and said, I want to make history. And that is what this is. My note says she's not like other girls. She's sexist. <laughs> this is like, I mean, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. This is, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot even beg me on your knees to take this seriously. She has another monologue like this later on in the book. But she's like, I want, I don't want to get married and have children. I want to get fucked on a yacht. And honestly, who doesn't? But people can still want children and want to get fucked on a yacht. They have a lot of sex in this book. I'm obviously not talking about every single sex scene. But they are mid... <laughs> yes, I remember! They are mid-sex. Um, and this is a threesome with Caleb and Jake because the Finnish dude is not yet involved. They all have nicknames and Caleb's nickname for Rachel is Hurricane. Jake's nickname for, uh, for Rachel is Seattle Girl because they had a... They fucked in Seattle. The universe is trying to stop me from filming this video, but I'm not giving up. Her nickname for the boys is for um, Jake, it's Angel. And guess what it is for Caleb? Take a little guess. It's Devil, cause he is a dom. If you are into BDSM and you are dominant, you're going to hell. I didn't like these nicknames, but they're having violent sex in this scene. And honestly, I would if I were having sex with Caleb at this moment, I would laugh in his face if he went on this tangent. I'm not your baby. <laughs> he growls, squeezing my throat. You're my twisted fucking hurricane. Chaos in a brunette bottle? Who am I? Who waits for you in the dark? What? Girl, we are in a contemporary romance. We're in a sports romance. What is- Who waits for you in the dark? I'm scared. Hopefully it's not the boogeyman. You want the taste of my shadows? And this is literally just because he is it like into like dumb. He has a dumb kink. It's like, it's not that deep. I'm not sure if it happens in this scene or in the scene later, but I think, I think it happens later where she's like, you're not being your true self. And she just slaps him in the face to provoke him to ha to be like, you have to let the monster out. It's like, I don't think that's how it works. He's just, he, what the fuck are we doing? Why are we slapping people? Also the line, chaos in a brunette bottle. Is that like a reference to something? Or what the fuck is that? It's a brunette bottle? Why is a brunette, why does a bottle have hair? Also amazing line, you know, I'm just pick picking some of the best uh, lines that are very quote worthy. I would wear this on a sweater. It says, I'm one of those women that actually finds cocks beautiful. I wonder how much of a self insert this is because she's also a double cancer and the author is, I wonder. Makes you wonder. They go to karaoke night. I think Caleb is singing something and it's a cover of Maneskin's Begging. And isn't that a cover? So he's singing the cover of a cover? Not even the original Bacon? Of course, the doctor that is responsible for the team because she's just some type of intern is sexist and this never really gets resolved in a way that I thought it was fitting. The way it gets resolved is very quickly at the end where they fire him and then Rachel becomes the team doctor. But there are like two or three instances where he is being sexist towards her like outwardly and instead of complaining about him because you the, the shit he says he's not allowed to speak like that instead of trying to go to hr or anything and like talk about this she just doesn't say anything she's like ah next time he says something i'm gonna go to hr 
And then she never does. Listen, princess, I don't know who stick you suck to win your fellowship, and frankly, I don't care. I'm not gonna let your constant incompetence affect the way I run my PT program. Do your job or I'll find someone else who will. For some reason, I've read two, three... This is my third contemporary romance, actually. The other one was The Spanish Love Deception. Yeah, and what else is there? Oh, Colleen Hoover, we don't count her. Fuck that woman. I also read the other one where she was a doctor, The Love Hypothesis, or Hypothesis. I still don't know how to say that word. And all of those books have an antagonist that's sexist. And I understand that this is an issue in our society, but in every single book that is contemporary, you can be sure that you will find a sexist boss and I feel like we need some other antagonist like have them murder someone or some shit you know it's getting boring the Finnish dude kisses her after he is benched by her because he's angry his injury is just getting worse and she's like we have to treat this before you can play again and then he gets so mad he just kisses her and she doesn't tell anyone this for a while and I think this is also the scene where she runs after him and she just jumps on him she just jumps on him, like, on his back, I think, to make him stop running away. It definitely happens. I'm not sure if it's this scene. It definitely happens. And I just have to reiterate, this is a doctor. And up to this point, these two... Like, what kind of professionalism is this? Imagine a, imagine if you were running away and your male doctor came and just jumped on you. <laughs> but they're like the gorilla and the kitten, so it's fine. Whatever the fuck that means. Oh, yes, I love this. Okay, so they're having sex right now. Love it. <laughs> They're having a threesome again, right? Because that's what they do. And she has both of their cocks inside of her vagina. Okay. I just don't think, peace and love, that that would be fun. Like, I just can't imagine that being fun, having that, like, that's too much. That's one too much. <laughs> but maybe I'm just boring, okay? But, you know. That Caleb is super the super daddy and then after this she has another scene with the Finnish dude she has agreed with him to uh, do this off the grid the whole testing for his injury to find out what it really is because she can't tell if it's like how serious it is and he's like I don't want any scans done because then I will have to give them to the Olympics team and then maybe I won't be able to play in the Olympics and so she's like okay I know I know someone I know a guy and they fly to the dude that gave her the fellowship the dude that she learned under or whatever this dude turns out to be the Finnish dude's dad coincidentally of course cause like ev nothing is a coincidence do you remember that guy is he still around this is not really what's important right now they figure out what injury he has you know he does a little bit of bonding with his dad after they fight and i think this is also like the first time her and the finnish dude have sex together blah blah, blah. and they have I, I don't know if they have sex before she tells the dudes that they kissed or if she tells them i think she tells them before they go on the on the plane but it takes a little while until she's like hey Caleb and Jake, I kissed another dude. And then they get really, really jealous and they're like, how dare you? And later on, they kind of force the Finnish dude into the relationship because they're like, either you're going to be with all of us or you're not going to have Rachel at all because he doesn't, he doesn't do the gay shit. He doesn't do that shit. And then he doesn't really have a choice because he's really in love with Rachel and he's like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I guess I just have to be into this gay shit. Even though he's very unsure, they just kind of start fucking in front of him and he's like, okay, I don't know what to do now. But she's explaining this situation to him on the plane before they have sex for the first time sometime later so he knows that she's in a throuple already. And I think it's really interesting because I pointed this out in my reading vlog and here's the proof. She's on the plane and she's telling him, imagine your cock buried to the hilt inside my C word, Mars. I don't think I'm allowed to say it on YouTube. I'm sorry, I would. Then Caleb slides in with his pierced, pierced dick, edging you to the point of euphoria. That's when my pussy will strangle you both and we all come together in a shaking, sweating pile of arms and legs and dripping cum. Now, just keep in mind that they're on a plane in public and she doesn't want anyone to know that she's in a throuple, but she's openly talking about three-way penetration and she does say here Caleb has a penis with piercings okay I just read it out Caleb's pierced cock and he's listening to her he's aware maybe 
Keep it in mind. We'll talk about it later that she had this conversation with him. They're always talking in star signs. I find this kind of irritating. For some reason, everyone knows everyone, like, the stereotypes of every sign, which I don't think is the norm. Peace and love. I don't think everyone knows every sign and what goes along with that. But she has lines like, God, you are being such an Aries right now. You are literally dragging me. Because all Aries drag people. I don't know. Finally, they also do it while they are... I'm just getting a snack. Don't worry about me. She's really into him because he's really big and Finnish. We love Europeans. Again, picking a line that I would, of course, put on a sweater. I fight the racing of my heart as I squeeze the muscles of my dick trunk pussy. Dick trunk. Sorry. <laughs> Not trunk, like in a car. Do I even have to say anything about this line? I've never taken such a big cock in my ass before. Jake has serious girth and length, but it's like comparing a big delicious bratwurst with a two pound salami. I'm personally offended as German. As Germany. I speak for all of the Germans. Bratwurst? Do not put that in your book. I forbid you. Comparison while they are having sex is insane to me. That is so nasty. Don't you think? Like comparing it to a fucking sausage, like a... Ugh. Maybe it's because I'm vegetarian. <laughs> but I think this comparison just is so unfit for this scene. And also her having anal with him the whole time. That's all they do. It's not, but it's really odd to me because she never does any preparing for anal. She does say, oh, he is stretching me so it will fit. But she doesn't do any prior preparation as far as we know. So she has a shitty asshole. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so now they are back in town. They're back from the scans. He got his scans. She knows what his issue is now. It's like a injury, whatever. I don't know anything about injuries. <laughs> she takes him home because she lives together with Jake and Caleb. She takes her finished new boyfriend with her, right? And so this is Caleb's POV and he goes... You didn't tell your new boyfriend about me, meaning his pierced penis. She shakes her head, her mouth curling into a lustry smile. Have you never seen a pierced dick before, Kinwen? He's never seen it, but he's heard of it. And she did tell him on the plane that he has a pierced penis, so that is a continuity error. Which just proves to me that this book is ass. I think this is with the Finnish dude. They just had sex and she's like, not really... A she doesn't really want to do it anymore. It goes, oh my god, you're insatiable. I cry my thighs, squeezing his head as I squirm under him. I push on his head with both hands, but it's like trying to lift a boulder or shift a boulder. You're the one crawling away, he replies in total deadpan. She's actively trying to push him off and crawl away. And he's like, no, earlier you said I, it would be fine. So we're gonna have sex until I'm satisfied. And of course, this is something that turns her on. And they do do it then. But I think it's weird. And I don't like it. She's actively like, I'm done. Like, I'm, I've had enough right now. Like, they can at least take a little silly break. Watch some TV. You know, and then they can go on. You can take a little breaks. Doesn't matter. I didn't like that. Jake makes a goal and the cherry lights up. The sirens blast and the arena erupts in cheers as I hear Bruno Mars singing uptown funk over the surround sound of the second time over uh, tonight. That's my song. The song they play when I score a goal. The team skates in surrounding me. And I, as far as I'm concerned, he picked that song. He picked Uptown Funk to be his goal song. I would pick Take Me to Church if I was here. <laughs> That's a really weird pick, I think. Do you agree? I don't know. I just can't listen to Uptown Funk anymore. And I would not want to hear that when I score a goal. I'm sorry. They have sex, um, the three of them for the first time. I feel like, again, the Finnish dude is kind of forced into this relationship. And I feel kind of bad for him. I think it would have been fine if this book was just about a throuple and not this dude added in. I don't think he added much to the story. And I think that she should have just written a, a, another book about this kind of character. Because it just didn't, the stories didn't flow together very well. They kind of try to force her into coming out uh, that they are in a throuple or now a quad. <laughs> I don't care, I growl. I'm tired of hiding, tired of pretending I'm not with you when I am. And she's like, I don't want to do it. And they really kind of talk her into it to a point where in the end, they tell the whole world without her knowing. And again, that's like not okay. I'm sorry. How is your really Like, I don't like it. 
you're not gonna stay together are you <laughs> she has a twin brother that we meet 77 percent into the book and uh, he was talked about before but we meet him and the family like 80 percent in the book that's too late girl i'm sorry and they leave them out he's a twin of hers <laughs> and jake also has a twin sister that's something they bond over but they're not really relevant you know i love you rachel i may not say it as fancily as mr european accent over here if you didn't know us europeans we all have the same accent we do and if you were to hear a finnish dude speak english and then a german girly like me we would sound the same because europe is like one country basically it's like when um, people on TikTok say, oh, I went to Europe in the summer. And it's like, where did you go? That that means so many different things. Europe is so many different things. You can't group them in together. It's not possible. We're not fucking America. Peace and love. Jake is coming to terms with his sexuality at, I don't know, pay, uh, chapter 94. He's already made out with Caleb. He sucked his cock and he's like, I'm not for this gay shit. I don't know what's going on. Until he does realize that they're into each other or whatever jake actually gets his cock out for caleb in the dressing room and they're about to fuck in the dressing room because he just got off the ice he got thrown off because he was beating someone up who hurt caleb so whatever it was a valid reason to beat someone up he is taking his cock out to have gay sex in the dressing room even though he's not for that gay shit and then they get caught because they didn't lock the door and I don't even think there is a door to lock. So I don't know what they expected. Then all of this kind of unravels. The fact that they have been in a quad. It hasn't been talked about with HR. They didn't know that um, the Finnish dude was involved in this who's also a player. They only knew about Jake. And then they say, my personal recommendation is that Dr. Price be fired effective immediately. And I agree. She does end up getting fired from her job but not really she gets a suspension that's all she gets and i think it's like a week long and it's either a week or a month but i think it was a week i mean did we not see this coming did we not think this was gonna happen by the way it's storming outside can you hear that i'm so sorry asmr this makes her freak out she wants to pull out of the relationship she's like maybe this we shouldn't be doing this i feel so bad i don't want this to impact your career and stuff like this and this whole relationship if it had just been her and jake just one of the players and her it would have been in unethical anyway why is it storming so much out of nowhere i'm so sorry she wants to pull out of the relationship the guys are like no we can't do this we're gonna make this work and obviously they end up together but it's I just genuinely feel like the universe is trying to do everything to stop this, for, to stop me from talking. They do eventually convince her, like, let's just stay together. And they even convince her so far that she's like, okay, we can go public with this, which they do do later. Her best friend comes over and over to her state. I think she's from Cincinnati or some shit and she's now in Florida, which do I know how far that is apart? No. I don't even know where Cincinnati is. Tess, you look so hot, I say, eyes wide. Haba haba. Haba haba. I don't even want to like comment on how stupid I think this writing is anymore because peace and love, you know? Peace and love, we gotta spread the peace and the love. Also, I cannot read the word pre cum anymore. I'm so sorry. They use that word so much in this book. During her suspension, they come to the conclusion that they do want to come out with their relationship, that they are polyamorous, and also all of the people she's ever worked with, including the team, but also she worked with the Lakers. I know them. That's so random. They arrange a meeting, and by they I mean her, you know, three boyfriends and husbands later on. They arrange a meeting with the team's manager, I think it is, like the higher up, okay, at a dinner with him and he's like, hey, everyone told me I should hire you again, so that's just what I'm gonna do, like everyone told me that they didn't like the other dude, and it wasn't because he was being sexist, the the other doctor that they had before, that's not the reason he gets fired, it's because the other people didn't like him that much, and I don't think they even speak about the sexism that she faced under this doctor again, so 
keep being sexist, King. That's what he got away with. They just didn't like him as a doctor. He tells her, after your suspension is up, you're gonna be the team doctor instead of the PT, which is the physical therapist. Oh, I know my things. And she accepts this, of course. She's freaking out. This relationship is also allowed now by everyone. And I'm not sure because this is at the very end of the book and I kind of skimmed shit. And you know, everyone is okay with this relationship. Her parents are okay with it too. I think they're separated. I'm not sure her mom and her dad, but of course the dad is the famous rock star and he's like, yeah, you know, us rock stars, we're crazy anyway. Because in no normal world, to no ordinary person, could this ever happen? Like, you have to be the daughter of a rock star and a very established doctor for shit like this to happen to you. And also really hot, of course. And if you're- if one of those things is missing off the list, well, too bad. She goes to one of the games. They had a very thought out plan to reveal to the world that they were in a quad. And this is so- this whole end scene just shows to you how insane this is and how surreal this is. And I think the author has said that she doesn't want to write any bad endings and that she wants to just write feel good stories. But it's at the point where it's so delusional, it's so delulu, like this would never happen in real life, that I just, I, I can't even immerse myself in it. I can't even be like, oh, I'm so happy everything worked out for them. It's like, this would never happen, I'm sorry. And I'm reading contemporary romance. It's gotta be realistic to some point. She goes to the game, for some reason when she arrives, there's a bunch of fans that are all cheering her on, and they have like signs, and they're like, we love you, Tess, and she's like, what the fuck is going on? Because she just got out of her suspension, or this is the last day of her suspension. So she wasn't really online and didn't hear anything? I don't know! She goes to the game and she gets a jersey from one of the dudes. And she didn't really look at this very closely before, but now she does. And she realizes the front has the Ray's logo and the top shoulders have Jake's 42s but the back is Omari's 31s and instead of either of their names at the top the jersey reads Price which is her last name so this means Caleb doesn't get any of it okay there's no Caleb in this jersey whatsoever he doesn't you know he doesn't get the last name he doesn't get the numbers he's just kind of, he's just a devil he's just a devil that's into BDSM it's giving like they, she's ordered the jersey online from Wish or Timu, which is really popular now, which we're not for that. I don't get how people fall for that shit. She got the wrong jersey in the mail. Like, it's all messed up with the numbers and the names. That's what it's giving. It's not giving cute, it's giving, oops, you messed up. What's happened was, Caleb switched out her phone for the exact same phone, but a different phone number. And so she didn't get any texts about this because what they did is they came out in that one week of her suspension, I think, okay? They came out to the to the world that they are quad and they were giving press interviews and Jake came out as bi, even though before we've had intriguing discussions about him saying, I don't feel like I'm bi because I'm only attracted to one man and he doesn't think that that makes him bi. Which, fine, you know, he doesn't really do labels, but now for the press he is doing labels. And I didn't really get that. And everyone accepts them. Everyone ex accepts them. She's like, there are, for every one troll, she used the word troll, on the internet, there's 10 people that come out and say they love us and they support us and they think it's so great. And peace and love, that would just not happen in real life. It would not happen. Especially if you not only come out, I think if you came out as an NHL player, as bi, because I don't know anything about NHL, I don't know how, but every male top, like, sports thing is toxic, Th that would gain support, definitely, love that, peace and love, you know, love that, but coming out as a quad, and then explaining, oh yeah, I was the doctor, and I started fucking my patients, and I'm all, you know, I, I don't think it would work. They have discussed before that they do want to get married, and Caleb was the only one that was like, ugh, like, yeah, I'm married, but I don't know if I want to have kids. And they have this discussion, like, we want to have kids, especially Jake wants to have kids, and Jake is gonna end up marrying Caleb, and then the Finnish dude ends up marrying, uh, um, Rachel, so they're, but they're all married basically. They're like, we're all gonna get married. We all sing. We've been photographed every night this week in public being out, he says with a smirk. 
He's been doing interviews, podcasts, a few TV spots. He's been doing like commercials. Yep, Jake Compton is officially very out as bi as a bisexual bisexual that's German bisexual NHL player. Puppy, which is the social media manager, I think, or whatever, is calling him the new face of queerness in pro sports. He adds with a roll of his eyes. And you're okay? More than okay. It had to happen to get that to get what we all want. He and I had to come out. But you're not the only ones, are you? I say with a raised brow. Baby, the three of us. <laughs> Baby, the three of us have been doing press for five days, coming out in every way possible. Mas has, which is the Finnish dude, has been doing it in two languages. Bilingual king. How did I miss this? My phone has been radio silent. Yeah, babe, that's not your phone. Oh, he's not British. Sorry. He pulls a matching phone from his pocket. Same case and everything. This is your phone. Oh, what the fuck? Turns out Mars could be a spy. He mirrored them and swapped them when he took you to the airport. He just did that really quickly. That's just a burner. No one has been able to contact you because no one has that number. And Poppy and your dad have been running major interferences. It's getting gnarly, to be honest. So she never went on the internet? What did she do that one week? I'm, I honestly don't remember. Like, maybe there is a good explanation for what she did that whole week and I didn't pay attention. But, like, what did she do? Did she redo? She just didn't hear anything. She was just like on a spa vacation or some shit like uh, screen free time or whatever You've been taught to think that the press is wholly bad He says that people knowing your story can only be bad that they only want to tear you down. I would want that But look around for everyone troll <laughs> it is for everyone troll has something um, Negative to say about us. There will be a thousand. Oh a thousand. I said ten. He says a thousand Peace and love. That's not true more people ready to wish us well That's what we wanted to show you tonight ratch. We just wanted you ratch like ratchet We just wanted you to step out of your own way Has huh? step out of your own way and let us show you that people can be good that that they can be kind They can be understanding we are not alone and this is going to be bad not going to be bad and then they say Jake and the Finnish dude ran a contest First 50 people to buy race season tickets would get flown out to this game with comped airline tickets, hotel, the works. They're footing the bill together because they're rich. They're all rich. I didn't know that you could be this rich when you play hockey. Wretch, within the first hour, Poppy had to shut the website down. Season ticket sales have doubled. Our next six home games are sold out. To make fun of you. Who? Why? Why the fuck would the tickets double? Because you come out as a quad. I don't think I would just gonna want to see them because they're like I'm gay, and then the tickets would double. Because why? Why do people want to see gay players more than non-gay players? I don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't understand the reasoning behind this. They all actually changed their name legally to Price. Uh, for the Finnish dude because he does marry Rachel. It's his official name, and then Jake just did it. At the government. I don't know where you change your name. The government name changing station. Also for this game that she comes to with her um, Timo jersey. Her dad is singing, singing the national anthem. As a surprise. <laughs> her rock star dad. You know he took time off. He was like okay. I can sing the national anthem at my daughter's three husbands game. <laughs> they all skate out. To uh, being announced as Price, which is her last name, of course, which is so lovely. They're coming out and he's like, here's Jake Price. And he's like, we get the epilogue a year later. And the epilogue is just them having sex. And it's, the, uh, I think, the worst sex scene of the book. It's very boring. It turns out no one can hold a grudge quite like a Finn. And my husband is the most Finnish Finn I've ever met. So... Maybe he just wanted a green card. The epilogue is just the three of them having sex. And in this epilogue, she reveals that she has taken out her IUD or UTI. I think that's a disease, actually. So never mind. She stopped being on birth control, is what I mean. And she reveals this during sex while the Finnish dude is having sex with her and the other two dudes are watching. And I also, I didn't mention this, but I think it's really awkward because she doesn't really describe what the other people... Are doing at least in the beginning she doesn't really describe what the other people are doing in these situations where they are having like m more of than one-way sex and I just was like wondering are they just standing there like this because I don't know because she doesn't tell us she doesn't tell us what they're doing and it left me confused 
she reveals, I took out my birth control, I want to have children, and so they immediately all, of course, have to come inside of her, which they do. All three of them do. They all have to immediately, you know, insem inseminate her or whatever the fuck it's called, and put their seed inside of her so that if she does get pregnant, which I bet she does, they just don't know who the baby's from. I thought they had established previously that it was going to be Jake, that who's going to be the dad. Because Caleb isn't really down for it. He's not really sure about children. But he just has to, you know, peer pressure is a good way to explain all of this. And that's how the book ends. On them saying we love each other so much. And that's it. Honestly, I don't have any wise words to end this on or end this with. I just did not like this book I did not think that the writing was good and this was not the author's first book she's written like a trilogy about a duke <laughs> she has had some writing experience of course publishing on Kindle Unlimited I've discussed before anyone can do it you don't need to have a team behind you to just publish your book and she just got really lucky or unlucky you know however you see it that Kiara picked up her book and read it and loved it and promoted her through the roofs and so it reached so many people but truly I, this is just not for me maybe maybe I don't get it it's with peace and love but I just truly I don't get it how people can read this and be like this is so amazing this is like my favorite piece of literature ever it just screams America and I say this about every book that I read and I do think the main characters also wear skinny jeans Besides the European guy, because we're from Europe and we don't do skinny jeans in Europe anymore. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Maybe consider becoming a channel member, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can just consider it. My next read will be Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is kind of on the same part with Fourth Wing from what I've heard. And if you do become a channel member, you will get early access to my videos, as I said. The next video will be a podcast episode, and then it will be the reading vlog for Divine Rivals, and then the review. This is kind of the order that we're doing now. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram, my TikTok, if you want. Actually, don't make sure, just if you want. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and maybe I'll see you in my next one. Peace and love. Bye-bye.